Hello again, I'm Martin Heine and on my last video one viewer gave me the honor of asking the first question, so I'm going to answer that right now. The question is really great as it relates to two interesting and common misconceptions that we can talk about right now. Here it is. Chris Domres asks, As a pianist I'm trying to achieve a recording like my years here at the piano. Zenf studio recordings of their piano used a dummy head with the mic elements in the ears. So should the spacing between the two mics be about the width of a head? And should there be an object in between, about the size of a head, to block the sound from the opposite side, from being caught by the side sensitivity of the mics? Thanks, Chris. So he's asking about two interesting phenomena here. One is the use of a dummy head for stereo recording, and the other one is using the human ear distance as a model for microphone spacing. We'll take a look at both. Let's start with the dummy head. In the early 1970s, the great microphone company Neumann, here in Berlin, developed the Kunstkopf, which internationally became known as the dummy head. And that's what it is, a model of a human head with pressure microphone capsules inside the ears. The capsules are KK83s, which are the same type as you'd find on a standard KM83, and which are considerably larger than uh, actual human eardrums for signal-to-noise reasons. The ears themselves are silicone models, originally molded from one of the head's designer's ears, but later on changed to be a closer match, as natural ears display considerable variety even when they're sharing the same head. Basically, the dummy head solves the following problem. When we hear something, our head shapes the sound that arrives at our inner ear to some degree. The size, shape and mass of the head that the sound has to bend around and importantly the pinna, which is the outside of our ears, uh, colors the sound depending on which angle it is arriving from. Uh, this is also called the head-related transfer function or HRTF. Now if you record with a microphone and reproduce this recording on headphones, this HRTF coloration is missing in the equation because the headphones play the sound directly into your ears, bypassing your head. If, however, you make a recording with a dummy head, it imparts the coloration from the head-related transfer function into the recording, making it amazingly real when played back on headphones. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that this is the most convincing solution for the often heard claim that it sounds just like you're there in person. Uh, more so than surround or atmos in any case, and this is from the 70s, so 50-year-old technology. The dummy head recordings sound particularly impressive when the sound goes around the back of the head, as the effect of the pinna is quite pronounced then, that really sounds astounding. Left and right also sound great, as they do in stereo as well, of course. However, from the front, the experience can be a bit underwhelming. And that's a biggie, as in music reproduction, the front is where all the good stuff is happening. Speakers definitely have an advantage in terms of depth and presence here. I'm gonna try and link to a video here of someone demoing a dummy head, so you can hear it for yourself. Okay, so we can see that crucially, the dummy head is designed for binaural recording and reproduction on headphones, is not designed for stereo recording and reproduction on loudspeakers. Binaural and stereo really are two different things. Stereophony is a recording to be played back from two loudspeakers, and a binaural recording is to be reproduced through headphones. Now, let's look at what would happen if we did use the dummy head for stereo. During the recording, the changes imparted by the head-related transfer function of the dummy head would be baked into the recording, which would then be played back on speakers and be perceived by an actual head, which would impart these effects over again, creating a sort of doubling up and resulting in an odd tonal imbalance. Furthermore, there is a problem with the spacing of the microphones in the dummy head. This brings us to the second common misconception, which is that a microphone spacing of about 17 or 20-ish centimeters is somehow very good because it corresponds to the spacing of the human ears. There's unfortunately no truth in this at all. Let's see why. Stereophony on speakers depends solely on frequency-independent level and or time differences, as mentioned in this great video here. Now the time difference that you can generate with a 20 centimeter spacing is only about 0.6 milliseconds at the most, that is, if the signal is coming directly from the side of the setup. And this interchannel difference will translate as less than 50% on the stereo image between the speakers, if 100% is like it's coming from one of the speakers. So under 50 is not very wide at all, and that would be the maximum possible. Keep in mind this localization is a bit signal dependent, so percussive signals tend to need less of a time difference than washier ones, 
But in either case, it's not enough for a full picture. Furthermore, the distance of the microphones has an effect on how low in the frequency spectrum the stereo effect will work. With a distance of 20 centimeters, you will have a stereo effect in the highs, but from the lower mids down, it'll be mono and not create a sense of envelopment. The effects of the microphone spacing in AB is really a large topic in and of itself. So do let me know if you wish to know more about those. Also, you should really give this a go yourself. Set up a pair of Omnis at 20 centimeters and then listen out for the narrow stereo image, the mono bass, and then forget about the magic ear distance altogether. Now, Chris, if what you want is to create a recording that's as close to sitting at your piano as possible, and you don't mind that you can only play it back on headphones, then binaural recording is an excellent option. As an additional tip, you can nowadays get earbuds with microphones in them. So when you record with those, the dummy head is your actual head, making the result much more convincing for you, but of course, not for other listeners. If what you want, however, is a recording to be played back on loudspeakers, then you will have to embrace the fact that it will sound somewhat different to the way it does when you're sitting right at the piano. But don't be daunted. The result may, in some aspects, sound even more impressive. I would suggest you start experimenting with two microphones in AB right in front of you, pointing down at the soundboard just past the rest plank, the tuners. This will give you the strong sense of pitch dependent left and right that the players, but not usually the audience, are experiencing. All right, that's it for today. Thanks very much for listening and thanks particularly to Chris for his great question. As always, if you have additional questions or your own experiences to share, please do so in the comments. Also, feel free to forward this video to your recording friends and make sure to follow me here if you wish to be notified about future episodes. Thanks very much. Goodbye.